welcome to Journey Church Online. I'm Katie, I'm your online host today, and we're glad that you are joining us. And to start things off, I want to ask you a question. You know, spring has sprung, we've got some nice weather here in Michigan, so I wanted to know, does yard work and spring cleanup, does that make you excited, or do you kind of dread it? For me, uh, I kind of am both, it just kind of depends on the day. But I'm curious, so let me know in the comments below. All right, well, it's our new series, a new month, and so on our blog, we have a new uh, blog post. It's called May Next Steps. If you click that, you can see all of the opportunities we have coming up this month. One thing I wanna highlight on the blog is our Connect card, and you can utilize that to request assistance or uh, request more information, or you can submit a prayer request. We would love to be praying for you and encouraging you along your journey. Something else you'll find on there is our guest card. If it's your first time joining us today or maybe you've joined us a couple times, we'd love to know that you are watching and we'll send you a gift card as our way of saying thanks for being here. All right, well, the band is going to start in just a few minutes, so grab your coffee, grab the kiddos, and let's get ready to shift our focus on to God. Worship God with us this morning. Almighty God. 
I hope that worship time was a meaningful experience for you. You know, today we are starting our series, Encounters with Christ. We're going to be reading through the book of Mark and seeing how people encountered Christ and how it changed their life. And our hope is that you can encounter Christ and that he can change your life as well. And it's, it's not just about going through this series, but it's about creating healthy habits that you can encounter Christ in your life. And one way to do that is to read the Bible. So we're gonna be setting a goal to read the Bible four times a week. And we'll be doing that right along with you. You can um, read the Bible, read two chapters a week in Mark, or we have a Bible reading guide. So be on the lookout on the blog for all of the details. All right, well, we are going to start this series and I'd like to say a quick prayer to open our hearts to God. Dear Lord, thank you for being readily available at every moment in our life because you love us and you want us to experience that love. So Lord, I pray that you open our hearts to encounter you. In your name we pray, amen. Hey guys, good to be with you today. Uh, my name is Mark, one of the pastors at The Journey. And as we start this new series today, it's all about us encountering Christ together. And over these next several weeks, we're gonna be going through the book of Mark in the Bible. And it's got all these stories about Jesus and, and the things that he taught and, and people he interacted with and things that he did and, and why he came. And our hope for this series, these next several weeks, is that you that you know more than just the title to the series, Encounters with Christ. That's what we want you to experience. We, we hope you encounter Christ in your everyday life. And, and these messages, as we go through them, we, we hope that that will set you up to do that, to, to encounter him uh, each day. And this book of Mark we're gonna be going through, it's, it's one of the four gospels or biographies of Jesus' life. It is the uh, one that was probably the first one written but it's also the shortest. But just because it's the shortest doesn't mean that it's not full of stuff. It is action-packed. This book portrays Jesus as a man that backed up his words with action. 
that proved he was the son of God. And so I hope as we jump in that you're ready for action. Action of what God wants to do in you and through you. So let's get started with our first encounter with Christ. So we're going to jump in with this first passage, Mark chapter 1, uh, verse 29. It says, as soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever. And immediately they told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her by the hand to help her up. The fever left her and she began to wait on them. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon possessed. The whole town gathered at the door and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. So here's this woman, it's Simon's mother-in-law has a fever. And back then a fever could have been deadly. They didn't have modern day medicine, but give credit to Simon right away here because it's his mother-in-law. Not every guy's concerned or cares that much about their mother-in-law as, as we should, but, but Simon does. He, he cares about his mother-in-law so much they're concerned about this fever and they believe and had faith that Jesus could do something about it. And he does. Jesus heals her. He, he helps her. The, the fever left and, and she was well again. And then in that town, there was this news started to spread about what Jesus did, that he brought healing. And, and so what happened was all these people, they, they started coming to Jesus with those that, others that needed to be healed. And it said there were so many people, they, the whole town was there at the door. Now, all those people at this point, they didn't all know who Jesus was yet or the reason he came to earth. Some people thought maybe he's just a great leader that could lead some people or Maybe he was just a great teacher, which he was. He taught the Bible and, and how to follow God and live in his ways. Others thought maybe he's just got some special powers, but they didn't fully understand who Jesus was yet. But Jesus was capable of healing. And as these people encountered Christ, they saw he had the power to do that. You see, Jesus, Jesus was a man. He had a physical body, but he was also God. God had come into the world as a man, and, and so Jesus was fully man and fully God, and he had the powers of God, including this power to heal people. And so during his time on earth, what we see is Jesus healed lots of different people in lots of different ways, and he wants to heal people. It's not like Jesus shows up and performs this one miracle, hey, I healed you and I'm done, that proves who I am, and it was so much more than that to him. He had compassion on people. He really cared about people and wanted to help them. He spent time with them and, and he brought healing to them. Jesus wants to bring healing to people. As we look at these stories and, and we look at these encounters with Christ, we want to ask, okay, so what, what does this mean for us? Like, how can we encounter him? How can you encounter him? And how do you want him to bring healing into your own life? Let's look at the next story. It's in Mark chapter 10, verse 46. It starts, it says, Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. In other words, like, bring him to me. <clears throat> so they called the blind man. Cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and he came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, or which means teacher, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately, he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Okay, we're going to talk about a few parts to that story. But this first part is this blind guy, Bartimaeus. And there's this interesting interaction because Jesus comes to him, looks at him and says, what do you want me to do for you? We would think it's kind of obvious, right? Like Jesus is the healer and he's blind. So yeah, obviously I wanted to see, but Jesus asks them, that question because he wants Bartimaeus to identify the need he has and identify how he wanted Jesus to heal him. 
what if you and I had that kind of encounter with Jesus? Like, what if he came to you and said, what do you want me to do for you? What if Jesus comes to you and says, how do you want me to bring healing in your life? Because sometimes we go through things in our life that are painful, they're difficult, and they hurt. And maybe for you, it, it, you would say, I would like physical healing, <laughs> like some of these people. Like, maybe you've been dealing with some pain in your life or an ongoing illness, maybe some ongoing health issues. But perhaps you need healing in another way. Maybe you'd like healing from a painful past relationship. And it's been hard and difficult and maybe you're still grieving and there's still some anger there. Or maybe you want healing from some of the ongoing disappointments that life can dish out. And, or maybe it's healing from depression. Like, like not just depressed for a day, but like you've been dealing with depression for a long time. You feel like it's got this grip on you and you'd like some relief from that. Or maybe it's healing from like worries and some anxieties of life. Sometimes there's so much of that it can make you feel ill. Or sometimes it's hard to sleep at night. I know, I know for me, like when I go to bed at night and when I hit the pillow, I'm out. I'm, I'm so tired. But frequently what happens is in the middle of the night I wake up and there's things going on in my mind that maybe I'm kind of worried or anxious about. Sometimes those things weigh us down or Again, they can make you feel physically ill. Or, or maybe you need healing just from some of your own thoughts. Because maybe you have these ongoing negative thoughts about yourself or lies you keep telling yourself. And it's like it's on this repeat playlist over and over again. And you would like healing from that. What do you want Jesus to do for you? How do you want Jesus to bring healing in your life? And just take a moment right now and just identify what that is. Just, just tell him, I would like healing from this. Tell him what that is. You know, in that first story I read, it said that Jesus took her by the hand and he helped her get back up. And he did that as he healed her to help the woman. But, but he does the same kind of thing with us. Because the thing that we would like healing from, sometimes it knocks you down or it holds you down. Sometimes it's hard to get back up and it's sometimes difficult to move forward. And what Jesus can do and wants to do is bring healing to that. He, he wants to help us through that and he wants to grab us by the hand and help us get back up and help us move forward again. He, and he can do that in lots of different ways. He can bring strength to our bodies through in a physical way that he can provide us with strength that we need or or maybe there's comfort because of the depression is just so ongoing and you want relief from that. He can bring comfort to that situation. Or he can give us guidance when we're dealing with the worries and the anxieties of life. Or he can also even bring healing by letting us know what the truth is through his words. Because sometimes we have these negative thoughts or these lies and we just need to be told the truth because truth can bring healing. He can bring healing to, to your own thoughts that you're consumed with. He can, he can heal a broken heart. How do you want him to, to grab you by the hand and help you get back up and, and to move forward? Recently, my wife, Jen, and I, we were remembering back to one of the most difficult years of our life. And it wasn't 2020. <laughs> it was much earlier than this. It's back when we lived in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And at that time, we didn't have family living by us. Uh, we had some close friends of ours, and sometimes friends can be like family. And, but this one year, it, life got hard really fast for us. It was right after our second child was born. It had nothing to do with him. He was a great kid, a great baby. <laughs> but right after that, uh, Jen struggled with postpartum depression. Now, many women uh, struggle with that, and it's not just like she was in a bad mood or down for a couple days. It was, <clears throat> it was many months of a struggle, many months of kind of this deep depression, and it was really hard for her. It was, it was long, it was dark, and it was consuming, and 
it was a struggle for me to, to see this happen because I didn't know what to do and I couldn't fix it. And, and it was just hard to see her struggle in that way. Well, in that same year, there was a number of other trials that started to line up that were coming at us. One of them was we had a couple friends of ours that decided after some years of marriage that they're calling it quits. They're just going to give up and getting a divorce. And that was sad to hear. And, and then there's this other night, my wife, Jen, and I, we were out on a, a date having dinner. And, and we came home. There was our, our babysitter was there watching our kids. They were really little at the time. And um, she said, hey, there was this call. There's this tragedy. And you need to call right away. And so we called and um, found out that one of our friend's husbands took his life and left her and the kids behind. And we told the sitter, we said, well, we gotta go. Can you, can you stay at like, I don't know how long, maybe spend the night, we gotta go. And we went over there and, and just kind of walked into that tragedy with her. And we also, a little later, heard of someone from our wedding party, another divorce was happening. And then probably one of the hardest ones was one of our close friends. Um, at the age of 28, she passed away from liver cancer and just weeks before she died, um, she found out that her three-year-old son was diagnosed with kidney cancer. And through all of this, Jen and I, even our relationship was kind of a struggle sometimes, and it felt strained. And we just kind of felt like that year we were getting punched in the gut again and again. And we kind of felt like we were getting knocked down. And it was a long, hard season and, and, and had days we don't know how to move forward. But along the way, God stepped in. God started to bring some healing to us in some big ways and some small ways. And one of them was just we were randomly paired with this um, Christian counselor, one of the best psychiatrists in the county. And, and they probably knew that's what we needed. Like we were, we were not functioning very well. Like we got to give them the best we got because we really needed help to kind of figure some things out. And, and the healing started to happen through that. And, and then we had a friend of ours say, hey, listen, I'll just, I'll babysit your kids one day a week uh, for a year for free just to help you guys. And, and that helped as well. And again, we didn't always know what we were supposed to do. So we just said, let's just try doing what, we, what we've been doing and, and what we had learned up to that point. And some of that included like, let's just keep trying to pray. Let's keep reading our Bibles. Let's keep going to church. Let's still try to be around others that are trying to follow Jesus and, and be there for support. We just kept trying to do those things to stay engaged in our relationship with God. And, and as time passed, God healed us. It took a while. But it's like God carried us through that time. He, he gave us guidance and provided for us, and, and he gave us hope again. And there's this verse in Isaiah 41, verse 13. It says, for I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. And man, that is what we experienced. As we felt like we were just getting punched in the gut again and again with no answers or solutions, we needed someone to hang on to. And Jesus was the one. Like we had no better option. There was, there was no better choice than this loving God who grabbed us by the hand and he just, helped us get back up. There's lots of things we learned that year. And as we look at these stories today, there's some things we can learn as well. That part of encountering Jesus as a healer, it's connected to our relationship with him. See, it's not just thinking of Jesus as someone for the, the wish or want list. It's more than that. It's our relationship with him. And, and we have a part in that relationship. As I said, for months, for us, we didn't know what to do. We just kept doing what we know to be good to do and, and, have, and some habits. And we weren't perfect at it. We didn't want to sometimes, but we kept trying to read our Bibles and praying and going to church and, and being around others, trying to follow him. And, and it was good for us. And healing came through that. And, you know, we talk about those same kinds of things here at The Journey a lot. And... And, and those things are helpful for us to stay engaged in our relationship with Jesus. And God can work through those things to bring healing to you. I know that to be true. Jen and I both do because they work. <laughs> they worked in our life and God brought healing to us through those. 
And there's this connection also between our faith and Jesus' healing. In that story I read a minute ago about the blind guy Bartimaeus, Jesus told him, he says, your faith has healed you. Then there's this other story in Mark chapter 5. <clears throat> it's this story where Jesus hears about this child that needed healing. Um, it was not good. And so he, he goes to heal her. And on his way, there's this crowd that's all around Jesus trying to kind of be close to him and see what he's going to do. And there, in the crowd, there's this woman who had been ill for a long time and tried lots of things. And, and she believed and had this faith. If she could just touch the garment of Jesus, that she could be healed. And she finds her way through the crowd and, and she touches him. And she's healed. And that story picks up in uh, verse 30. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciple answered, and yet you can ask who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. You see, another aspect of encountering Christ is putting our faith in him, is trusting him that he can heal you, having this faith that Jesus can bring healing to your life and, and that no one else can bring greater healing to you. And this healing that he can bring, it, it happens in, in, in different ways with different people and and in different time periods, there's this saying, you probably heard that time heals all wounds. There is some truth to that. But the greater truth is that God working in us over time heals us. God working in us over time heals us. And, and for Jen and I in our situation, you know, we didn't get all the answers as to why all that stuff happened. But the healing came through time. He healed our, our heart. He even healed our thoughts. He took us by the hand and he helped us get back up and, and so we could move forward with him. The days when we hit the ground, sometimes literally in anger or sadness, he grabbed us by the hand and he helped us get back up and brought healing to our lives. <laughs> there were times that um, I wanted it all fixed. Like even my prayers were like, all right, God, will you heal us by fixing all this? It didn't get fixed. In fact, things got worse and it was messy and it was, and it was, and it was confusing. He brought healing to us. He provided for us. He brought people around us to, to help us and, and, and to walk the journey with us. And you know, this thing of healing, it, it usually is not just like a one-time thing. We need Jesus every day to heal us from the pain and suffering that life can dish out. And the way like that God created us, like how he's created our bodies, like it takes time for the body to heal itself, but it will. For, for example, like a, like a broken arm, right? If you put it in a cast, it might take what, eight weeks for the body to heal itself. It takes time for the body to do that. And in the same way a physical injury takes time to heal, it takes time for God to heal you mentally and emotionally and, and even spiritually. The longer you've been hurting or the longer it, it, it's been difficult to go through that painful relationship, the longer you feel like depression has had this grip on you or you've been dealing with this anxiety or anger or fear, the, the more times you feel like you've been punched in the gut, the longer that's been going on, you need time on the other side to heal. And again, it's not just that time will heal. Through the healing process, God wants to bring you closer into him. Many in these stories that were healed, they began a relationship with Jesus. Bartimaeus is one of them. It says that after he was healed, he started following Jesus. You see, he doesn't want to just do a quick fix for you and send you on your way. He, he wants to do something bigger. He wants to bring healing to your relationship with him and to bring you closer into him. There's this story in, in Mark chapter 2 where there's these four guys. They have this friend who's paralyzed. 
and they carry him around on a mat to get where he needs to go. And, and they hear about Jesus and, and where Jesus is and teaching this one spot. And, and they believed and had this faith that Jesus could heal him. So they, they bring him by the mat. They haul him into this house, drop him through the roof, and put him in front of Jesus. And, and Jesus does something interesting. He, he, first he says, your sins are forgiven. And then he says, get up and walk. He heals the guy from being paralyzed. Now, why do you do it like that? You see, Jesus isn't only thinking about our immediate needs. I mean, sometimes we think that's what he's for. Like, like Jesus, I want you to fix uh, my, my stuff, like my needs, and, and here's my wish and want list. Can you just heal that? He does care about those things. But Jesus healing us is so much more. It's about giving him your heart and putting your faith in him. That, that this faith in Jesus and what he did for you can heal you from sin. That he wants to bring this forgiveness in your life so your relationship with God will be restored, not just here on earth, but for all of eternity. Yeah, he wants to bring healing to you here and now, but the time we spend eternity is so much longer and much more permanent, and Jesus cares way more about that. A few minutes ago, I had you maybe think and, and answer the question Jesus might ask is, okay, what do you want him to do for you? How do you want him to bring healing to you? And maybe... You thought it would be like a physical healing or, or maybe healing you emotionally or from a broken relationship or from some depression or anxiety or from even your own thoughts. And, but let's also ask him to heal your heart. Ask him to heal you from the horrible disease of sin. You know, these healings we see in these stories about Jesus, you know, we see a lot and learn a lot from him. He has this love and he... He really cares. Like he has this compassion and, and he wants to heal us. But these stories that we see, he, he does all of those healings so we know that he's the one can, that can restore our relationship with God. He does all those healings so we know he's the one that can bring healing to our heart and to heal us spiritually. That's almost like Jesus saying, listen, yeah, I know I can bring, bring healing to your life here and now and, and help you in that way. But I do that so you can know that I can heal your heart. I do those healings so you know I can heal you spiritually. Again, sometimes we just want Jesus to fix things, to make it better, and, 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 and to make us feel better. And there were certainly people in the crowd that were probably like that. Jesus does care about those things, but he's thinking much bigger. He wants your heart to be healed, to be close and and to be connected in relationship with him. He wants to bring healing to you physically and emotionally, mentally, relationally, and spiritually. He wants to heal your heart for here and now, but for all of eternity. And he came, Jesus came to bring that kind of healing to everyone on the planet. One more quick story here today. Mark chapter six, verse 54. It says, as soon as they got out of the boat, People recognized Jesus. They ran throughout that whole region and carried the sick on mats to wherever they heard th that he was. And wherever he went, into villages, towns, the countryside, they placed the sick in the marketplaces. They begged him to let them touch even the edge of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. There were so many that needed healed. There were so many that encountered Christ. And when you encounter Christ, it will change you. Jen and I know that to be true in our own lives because we experienced it. See, when you engage with him, when you encounter Christ, you can't not be changed. When you engage with him, when you, when you encounter Christ, you can't not be changed. He'll take you by the hand. He'll help you get back up and it'll help you move forward with him. Let's pray as we close today. Jesus, thank you for all these stories in this book of Mark, about all those that you healed. Thank you that you care about us, and we ask that you bring healing to our lives and, and to help us bring healing in all these different ways. But Jesus, we also ask that you heal our heart, that you heal us spiritually, and thank you that you came to do that that through your death on the cross and rising from the dead, you 
came to offer us forgiveness and restore our relationship with you and bring healing, not just for life on earth, but something that lasts for all of eternity. Thank you for doing that for us and for everyone on the planet. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the healer. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Mark, for sharing today. Make sure to join Mark tomorrow morning on Facebook Live for a more in-depth look at today's message. And again, our hope for you is that you can encounter Christ in every aspect of your life. So check the blog uh, for that Bible reading guide like I mentioned earlier, and as well as all the opportunities we have coming up for May. Two things I wanted to point out that you can find on our blog. The first one is uh, links to giving. Thank you so much for being a part of our mission and for your generosity. The second thing is Journey Kids. So gather your kiddos and participate in Sundays at Home. It's a meaningful experience for the whole family. All right, well, we hope to see you online this week. We hope that you encounter Christ this week, and we look forward to seeing you for week two of Encounters with Christ. Until then, let's follow Jesus, spread kindness, share hope. We are better together, Journey. Have a great week.